the good and bad things about being a pilot? Good things. You can go there much easier, much faster, where you want. And uh, also very, very sensational, I would say, uh, to fly and to see all things from above. So I like this since I was very young. I started my, my training uh, just uh, two years ago, but uh, I like it since uh, I was uh, young. Mm -hmm. And the bad part? The bad part uh, are all these tests. I am, I am doing tests almost all the time because I have an examination, physical examination uh, every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, last time I had a problem with, uh, with uh, sugar. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to repeat the test. And then uh, I have this test here, I have to make English yet now, so this is the, the, the worst part of the history. Okay. Which one do you prefer, Boeing or Airbus? Boeing or Airbus? <laughs> yeah. I have a, a colleague which is uh, flying, bus flying is different planes, and he told me that uh, Boeing is better because it is less automatized. As uh, automatic as uh, Airbus, mm -hmm. so you have the impression that you have, can get a better control over the airplane as okay. Airbus. Okay. What place don't you like to fly to? I don't like to fly to crowded places. Like, like I would never fly to Sao Paulo or so. I, I prefer to fly to places uh, elsewhere where there uh, are uh, less uh, traffic. I see. You can look better outside. You don't have to make so much uh, conversations. Uh, so. Okay. Why is it important to study phraseology? It's very important because you have to you have to communicate exactly what you want, what you need. You have to receive information, and besides this, you have to do it in a a proper manner to avoid that uh, you will take too much time from the controllers and too much from your own time, so you have to learn a little bit. Okay. If you worked abroad, what airline company would you like to work for? It's the not apply to me. I'm just uh, I'm flying for uh, just for pleasure. I will never fly abroad. Would you like to? No. Why no. not? No. Why not? Mm -hmm. I have another profession. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an engineer and uh, oh, I have okay. a plant where we have a lot of uh, other activities and that's not, uh, it's not my main aim now. Alright. What problems may a pilot face at customs? At customs? Let's say when you, when you have passengers which have not got a, a documentation and you have um, uh, merchandise which are not allowed, these kind of problems. Mm -hmm. The documents of the airplane should be also okay. And so. Have you ever had any problem? Never. never. We never flew outside. Oh, right. It's reason that we started now. <laughs> As a pilot, would you encourage people to be also a pilot? Oh, yes. I'm propagating this. <laughs> I like to do so. Okay. Uh, tell me about your first solo flight. My first sol solo phone. Your first solo flight. Solo flight. Oh, yes. Sorry. I I. It was in a classic mm -hmm. It was small PH eighteen, and uh, I just made one take off and landing, and it was marvelous. It was filmed. So. Very nice. Okay, good. So now we're moving to the second part of the test, okay? okay. In this part, you will listen to a speech from the recorder involving two different situations. When it finishes, I want you to report what you understood, okay? Yes. Remember that you can listen to each extract twice. Yes. This time, okay? So you can adjust your phone. May I? Let's go. 
What did you understand here? The passenger did not fully... In English, yes. <laughs> passenger was not bothered and he was waiting for 40 minutes. Okay. Would you like to listen to one more time or it's yes. fine? One more time. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. So now you are the captain. Make a call to ground staff asking where the passenger is. Could you please repeat the question? I and the captain, I have to, to ask who? Where the passenger is. Okay. Um, Here is the captain speaking. Um, uh, please, passenger, uh, present yourself at the, at the desk, at the uh, entrance desk, or I don't know how to put the name there. For that. But please present yourself at the, uh, at the desk. Okay, so listen to the next step. Yes, please. Take bags out on the plane. These bags out on the plane. Okay, listen to that. No, I confirm. I, I ask you to take the bags out of the plane. Okay. So now we're moving to the second situation. But before I play the CD, I wanted to explain what a compressor stall is. Yes, but the compressor? Stall. Yeah. The compressor is tall. Compressor. I didn't understand you this time. I just want you to explain to me what a compressor stall is. And the compressor stall Com is... Compressor stall. Stall is tall. Plane is stalling when the speed is not big enough, not sufficient. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the relation with compressor. Okay, that's fine. So let's suppose you had a compressor stall on your left hand engine, okay? I wanted to report this situation to Miami Tower and ask for immediate return, okay? The call sign is cruiser 221. Cruiser? Cruiser? 221. Um, I have to, to, to inform uh, Miami, Tower. Miami Tower that the Cursor 221 has a failure in the compressor at the engine number one. Requesting immediate return, okay? And the requesting your assistance or your help, or I, I, I don't know what is on compressor failure is, it's a problem at the motor. At the, at the motor. Okay, so listen to that. I confirm we have a problem with the compressor at the right hand, hand engine and I will maintain the altitude. Okay, good. So now we're moving to the third part of the test, okay? Yeah. In this part, you will listen to two different situations again, but this time I can play the CD only once, yeah. okay? Then you tell me what you understood and I'll ask you some questions about the situation. What did you understand here? Nothing. Repeat, please. I can't. You only cannot repeat. Once. Only one, one, mm -hmm. only one time. Problems during the takeoff, but I didn't, I didn't follow. No. No. So I will play the second one. I can play on the ones. Okay? Yes. What did you the problem was when the door opened, when light was on, indicating the problem, and the plain intention is to maintain the altitude also. Mm -hmm. uh, the lights were on because the door was open, 10,000 feet. 
great. So what can happen if the door opens me there? At this level, 3,000 feet uh, uh, is not so dangerous. Depends if it is uh, um, just unlocked, but still there, then the plane will fly, will fly normally. But if uh, the, the door really uh, is gone, then you will uh, have several problems with, uh, with the plane, to fly the plane. And if you are higher, the higher fly level, then uh, you will have a dispersalization and, and uh, much more serious problems. And what are the procedures if it happens? Procedures are to de uh, decrease the speed and the, the, the fly level as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what's the worst emergency a pilot can have? If you, the worst situation is um, if you are in one, one motor uh, plane and you, you lose the motor. Mm -hmm. That's a very serious. Uh, all the recognize if you have fire inside, it's also very serious into the motor or into the plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're moving to the last part of the test, okay? Okay. I want you to describe this picture to me and then I'll ask you some questions about it. You don't need the headset anymore, okay? It's a cabin of a big airplane. Probably an old type, as uh, there is still one uh, flying engineer here at the right hand, and there are two two pilots uh, flying the plane. Captain is on the left, and there is also one. I, I never see this fourth guy here, which is uh, actually communicating with probably or somebody else, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Besides this, looking for them, seems to be not any emergencies, they have a good uh, face. Okay. How do you think developments in technology affect pilots' career? You can see here, for instance, in the, in the, in the, in the, the, the past, if you have to fly such a plane, at least three people, they're flying with only two actually, so it affects directly the number of people mm -hmm. necessary to fly a plane. It's all the time uh, less people into the cabin. Mm -hmm. How do you see aviation in the future concerning the number of pilots on board? Depending first on the, the period, the, 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 the time of the flight time. So if you are into the permitted time, I think it's eight hours or nine hours, then uh, probably they will have only two pilots, not reserve uh, people, reserve crew. But uh, less than two, I, I cannot imagine for for safety reasons, as some of them could have a um, health problem, and uh, mm -hmm. only one will be not sufficient to. to Don't you think this number could ever go down? I, I cannot see it because uh, I was already in a cabin, and uh, I saw. When they are taking off or when they are landing, one is doing all the time uh, communication with the tower and this kind of jobs. And the other one is flying the plane, so you cannot imagine that only one can do all these uh, jobs. Right. At one time. Okay. Anything else? From my side, not. Okay, so Breno, this is the end of our test, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Okay.